everyone. Welcome to our presentation here uh, on Cosmos DB Conf. Uh, we're doing a presentation today on how to use cloud native apps with Cosmos DB and being ready for recovery. So what do we need to worry about when planning uh, our application to be recoverable? Uh, so I am Andre Hax. I'm a senior director at Avanade Brazil, I work with uh, our enterprise technical architecture team. I have a lot of experience with uh, building solutions for our customers. Uh, I also have a lot of certifications there, including the Azure Architect one. And with me today is Jan, who's also an architect here at Avanade. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Andre mentioned, it, I, I work with him here at Avanade Brazil. I'm also an, an and software architect here, uh, and I have some some certifications too on, on Azure as as the solution architect, and we we will present to to you today some some points that we need to highlight when we are working with uh, cloud native applications and how Cosmos DB will, will help us on it. Okay, so I, I will give an introduction here about the, uh, the the main point that we need to 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 focus here that is the global distribution okay so with the global distribution we have some key benefits of, of adopting it so one, one of the main benefits is that we have a an unlimited elastic write and, and read scalability on, on on our storage accounts right when we activate the global distribution. Um, the region write availability around the world with with a, a, an SLA of 99.99%, right? So we we have a lot of availability that, uh, with our, our Cosmos DB account here, uh, depending on how we configure how we configure it. Um, so this is one of the points that we will talk later on the presentation, okay? Uh, the other point here that is very good on, on, on we are working with Cosmos DB is that uh, Cosmos DB grant uh, for us to uh, the region right operations here in less than 10, 10 milliseconds, right? So this is uh, very good when we are talking about global distribution. Uh, other point that is uh, is a, a a very good point here is about the uh, when when you need to to add new regions on, on our storage account we we can do this without taking off our, our applications so we just re, uh, create a add a new region on on our Cosmos DB account and uh, as magic we we are working with another region there without stopping our applications, okay? So other point is that Cosmo, with Cosmos DB, we can ensure our business continuity uh, when we have an, an regional outage, okay? Um, other point, uh, we can uh, scale the, the region right operations, uh, the throughput of our re region right operations here globally across the, these regions and also we we uh, with all, the, all those points we we can build high high available high, high available and responsible apps right so the the first point that uh, we need to talk here is how we can activate this global replication and and fail over uh, is just like magic <laughs> we just add the the regions here the new regions that we we need to to geo-replicate our Cosmos DB. And our Cosmos DB started replicating our data through these regions, okay? So uh, the, the important part here is when we are, we are provisioning our Cosmos DB account, we need to, to enable the, the geo-redundant, the geo redundancies and global um, multi-region rights and availability zones if we we use it okay uh, we need to enable these things uh, on the storage account provisioning we are not able to to add this before, uh, later so 
we we need to plan what we will do on our storage on, on our Cosmos DB account before provisioning it. Um, and the other point is the automatic failover that we we can handle manually or or automatic with with a priority here for our regions. And uh, we'll talk about uh, about cons the consistency levels. I will I will switch to to Andre to talk about the consistency levels here. Yeah, regarding the consistency levels, uh, Cosmos offer uh, five options of consistency level, and these are important when planning for availability. So we have the stronger consistency that is strong. Uh, and the, the least strong consistency, which is eventual. Uh, we're going to explain the three main uh, ones with some, some examples. So the strong consistency implies that when I do a write in a region, I have, for instance, in this example, a one write region and three read regions. When I do a write, it's going to commit on all the regions at the same time. So it's going to wait for the data to replicate to all the other regions. So if I do a write and then the, I have the response that it's OK, uh, the data is already on all the other regions. And it's, uh, that's why it's called strong consistency. I, can, I have a guarantee by the platform that every region will be the same at all times. This comes with a price in terms of uh, latency of the writes. So, I'll have uh, a little bit of longer write times. The middle consistency that we have uh, is called session consistency. If I have a, a user that's in a session, uh, it's going to have the same strong consistency that we have, even if I'm writing to a region and reading from other regions. But uh, a separate user using a different session uh, will not read at the same time, but it has a guarantee that the writes will be at the same order. So I'm not going to read at the exact same moment uh, in the session, but uh, I have the consistency that the writes operations are going to happen uh, in the same order. The last uh, and least uh, strong consistency is called eventual consistency, and it's the loosest consistency in that uh, the writes can be read out of order in different regions. So if I do a write in one region and I'm going to read in another region, I can get a different data. For, for instance, region four can have the first uh, data, the first write that I have, but region two can read the second one first than the, the first write. So this will guarantee the largest performance because I don't have to wait anything for my writes to happen. But at the same time, it can lead to some inconsistency if I need consistency between the operations and it needs to be considered. So that's the, the main points here regarding the consistency. And Jens is going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the distribution. OK, guys. Uh, so. Uh, as Andre mentioned it, uh, we have a lot of uh, kind of consistency, right, f to to work on our Cosmos DB. But in, in practice, what what does impact on 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 our SLAs and and etc. Right. So we have uh, some 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 scenarios here that, uh, as you can see, um, we we can have a. Uh, regions that has only right um, uh, the region will will have only re, uh, right operations and, and read operations and other has only read operations so uh, depending on our strategy we will have a, an sla uh, different from from the other strategies right so the main point here is to to highlight that depending on our on our strategy here, we we can have data loss and availability loss depending on the the strategy that we are using on on our region, right? Like this one, we we have only one one region one one region on the cos on our Cosmos DB, and we we are not using 
uh, the availability zones for this region. So uh, if a zone, uh, we have a, a zone failure here, we will have data loss, okay? So if we have a, a zone failure uh, as the previous item, we will have availability loss of our Cosmos DB. If we have regional outage and, and etc., we will also have data loss and availability loss. So this is why it's very important for us to know uh, which, uh, which consistency level we have to, to implement on our, on our Cosmos DB, uh, depending on, on our strategy with the zones here, the multi-region or single region, or which one we will take here. So Andrea will, will run further on, on the, the SLAs, and we'll, we'll bring some scenarios here to, to sample this. So uh, when we build an architecture, we need to, to consider um, the, the strategy for Cosmos DB, but also for the service that we're going to use to access it. So if we are using a single region write for Cosmos DB and an app service or any other compute instance, uh, compute service in uh, just one region and we our user is accessing it, uh, we're going to have the, the SLAs for uh, Cosmos will be 99.99% and for the app service, 99.95%. The compound SLA in this case will be 99.940%, which will be uh, about 25 minutes of voltage per month that I can have uh, according to Microsoft SLAs. Uh, what happens if I go to a multi-region write? So I have my app service in just one, but the the DB is using multi-region write. So my SLA for the Cosmos is greater, but my SLA, my compound SLA is not that greater. We have uh, possibly up to 22 minutes of voltage per month uh, still with this region, with this uh, strategy. So in order to do a truly uh, available solution, we're going to have to add a second app service. So we have both our app service and our Cosmos DB on multiple regions, ideally the same, uh, with multi-write on the Cosmos DB. And then for in order to have this, I'm going to need also the front door to do the balancing uh, and the distribution. And in this case, we can see the compound SLA of our solution is uh, almost 99.99% which gives them a maximum outage of four, uh, a little uh, under five minutes of outage that I can expect per month. And it is interesting that we have this with just two regions. Uh, if, if we add a third region, the, our SLA is not going to be that great. We're going to have a, a slight improvement, but not that great uh, because the, the, the SLAs uh, don't change that much for two or three regions. That's not to say I don't need three regions. I might need three regions for better um, response time for our users or something like that, but it doesn't impact really the, the availability of the solution. Okay, so how, how do we test this? If we have this application, how do can we simulate an outage on our, on our scenario? And Azure has a new uh, solution that was launched a few a few uh, months ago. That's Azure Chaos Studio, that allows us to simulate uh, our real workloads in the cloud and to to simulate outages, to simulate uh, stuff happening to our environment. For instance, in the the case of Chaos of Cosmos DB, Chaos Studio allows it to fail over one right region to uh, another one. So we can simulate this scenario to see if our application uh, is up to it. So I'm gonna show here my screen. Uh, this is Chaos Studio here. Uh, and uh, it shows uh, how we can uh, create an experiment here. I have created experiments that's gonna fail over Cosmos for five minutes. I have a Cosmos DB instance running on two regions with West US being the primary and East US being the read region. Uh, and I'm gonna fail over this for five minutes. 
I have it running here already. You can see it's running. Uh, and I have an example here that it's uh, reading, writing in one region and reading in the other. You see here that it happens uh, almost simultaneously here. So it has uh, a very uh, large uh, throughput here. And it's reading on one region and writing on another one. Uh, when I run here, the, the failover is going to fail. And since I'm, re I'm writing to the, to the primary region, it's going to automatically redirect my writes to the, the failover region. So uh, we can expect to see if we're going to have any outages. So I'm going to run here. It takes a little bit to, to, um, to, to, to process the, this. So we're going to go back to Young, and he's going to show uh, another demo. OK, everyone. Um, as Andre told us, uh, we will have uh, this, this demo that we, he will show in a few minutes for us. Uh, the, the data from, from his app we will replicate it, will be replicate, replicated to, to, to both regions and we'll take one region off to, to, to stay the region only on the secondary region, right? The other sample we will we'll show to us, to, to you guys, uh, is that this scenario that we are using uh, an Azure function here. Uh, actually, we will use two Azure functions, right? Uh, both Azure functions is connecting on, on our Cosmos DB account that has two, two regions here. One region that is uh, in Europe will, will have the region right operations and the, the second region will have only the region operations, right? So we will show the demo for you. Um, let me just set up my screen here. So basically what we have here is uh, two Azure functions, right? That we can specify which is the preferred locations of each one. So I put one here in North Europe and the other one in the East US. Okay, that is our reach region. Uh, one point here that is uh, critical when you use uh, more than one Azure function trigger here with Cosmos DB is that uh, when you do the read, you need to specify the, the list collection name here. So you need to, to have a, a, list a list collection for, for, each, um, for each Azure function that we have here. So these functions basically uh, trigger, uh, are triggered by Cosmos DB here when we have uh, an operation on the, data, on the database, right? So I will show to you this running here. Just a second. Okay. So and we will do an update on the database here. I'll, I'll do the update directly on Cosmos. Okay, applied. And our trigger took the information here, as you can see. Uh, the, the point here that you can see is that since we have different locations, we have uh, different times here because the, the data needs to, to replicate from our central instance to to the the failover instance and the other the other regions here on, on our Cosmos DB. So, but we we still on the on the Cosmos DB uh, guarantee of of delivery, right? So we are saving a, a, a data on on the North Europe region, and this data goes. To, to the United States in less than two seconds, right? So it's very fast. We can see here 
that uh, Chaos Studio is still running, so it's fading over for the, the West region here. And we can see that it stopped sending the writes to this region here on the graph. It's only sending the, the information here to East US. And we can see here, uh, this, this spike is the writes being redirected here to, to East US as well. So uh, it will uh, deliver all the, 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 um, the traffic to the correct region. And the, the good thing here is that we don't have to do anything uh, at all on our programming side. And for most cases, we don't even going to have error. It, uh, our code is going to st stay running. And uh, we don't even, uh, it's not going to even trigger an error. It's going to still uh, read and insert the data on the secondary region without needing to stop the application. All this is done uh, automatically by Cosmos DB and by the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure that Microsoft provides. Oh, just because that I had an error, but uh, you see that it will recover. In the case there is an error, it's gonna be something, uh, this is probably a timeout and it's gonna happen. And then, uh, it's gonna recover uh, quickly. So uh, that's uh, that is uh, what we had to share with you today. I would like to thank everyone for uh, watching our presentation. If you have any questions, you like to connect with us uh, in LinkedIn, uh, please do so. This is our contacts there. Uh, so thank you a lot. Yeah, I want to say goodbye to everyone. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, everyone. And let's connect offline, okay? Thank you very much.